Now we can take these nodes and wrap them up into a material function. So right click and create a material function. And I'll call this MF for material function underscore rotate 2D. So let's dive inside and I'll start by creating a input to this function by creating a function input node. And this input will be called in point for where we will be plugging in our UVs. And it's a 2D vector for its input type. Then let's copy and paste this to get another 2D input for changing the pivot point of where we want to rotate around because we might want to rotate around something other than the 0.5 sensor point. And lastly, we want an input to specify the angle of rotation, which is just a scalar input because this is a single floating point value. Now we can go back to the material and pretty much just select everything between the UVs and the texture sample node. And then once we have that selected, we can just hit Control X to cut those nodes. And then we go back to our material function and Control V to paste them in. So let's connect up our function inputs to the right places. The in point goes into where the UVs were in the subtract node. And the pivot point goes into the second input of the subtract node where we were offsetting the UVs to center them. Now we can take that 0.5 constant vector node and use it as the default value of the pivot input in case nothing is plugged into the function from the material that uses it. And we must also remember that it's being used at the end of this function to add the offset back, so let's plug that in as well. And when we use these preview values to fall back on, we have to make sure that on the function input node, we tick on the preview value as default checkbox. And we also want the same for the endpoint input, so let's create some default texture coordinates and set them as the input default. Next, let's grab our angle parameter and set that as the default for the angle function input and connect up the angle to the sine and cosine nodes. One more thing is that we want to connect up the final result to the function output node. And we'll save that. Now let's go back to our material and use this function to see if everything is working as intended. We can create a material function node directly in the material editor and place one down, but it comes in in an unspecified state. So we can choose from the asset browser and select the rotate function that we just made. Once that is selected, all of the inputs should appear with their correct names and we can just connect it up. All of the default values are working with nothing plugged in, but I'm going to use the time node trick to see how the rotation performs. So I create a time node and a multiply node and set a lower multiplier to make the speed slower. And I'll connect that into the angle input. And there we see our texture rotating. So we know that everything's working fine. And there's actually one small step which I got wrong when setting the material function up. And that's that the pivot point doesn't do what it currently should. Going back to the material function and looking at the pivot point input, we actually want that to be a user-defined offset that acts on top of the 0.5 center offset. So I'm going to create a 0, 0 default value and plug that into the function input. And then I'm going to take the 0.5 constant node and perform a new center offset with a subtract node and plug in the pivot point to that. And then that goes into the original subtract to chain them together. And again, make sure that we plug in that new combined offset back into the add node at the end, right before we return the final value. Now we can verify that the pivot point is working correctly by plugging in a 2D vector constant node and entering a non-zero pivot point. So here, point 4 is actually shifting that center rotation point to the left, and then point 2 in the vertical direction shifts up that pivot point. So hopefully this example showed how a little theory can translate into a practical use and highlight some basic vector math.